coming. Even Daniel, in Daniel chapter 7, hundreds of years before this was ever, ever thought about, he wrote and prophesied this very event that is yet to come. So what's our job? What's our job? Not to stand here gazing up into heaven as the disciples. It's good to think about us going. It's good to think about the second coming of Christ. But our task is not to gaze, but to go. But to go. Did you hear what I said a moment ago? That those who are not believers at the rapture of the church will be left here upon this earth. Who is going to give them the gospel if all Christians are gone? We need, we need to realize that we've got to go now, beloved. Church, this is our mission. This is our mission. I want to ask you a sobering thought, a question this morning. Do you know of anybody, anybody, any, just one person, do you know of one person that you can call their name and you're not sure in your heart that they are a Christian? Or you, you're convinced that they're not a Christian? That's the more reason for you to go and tell them immediately. Immediately. We must be ready for his sudden return and get others ready to meet God. I want to say to you this morning, there is no prophecy in Scripture yet to be fulfilled that would keep Jesus from coming anytime. Even today. There is no prophecy. You say, Pastor, how do you know that? Turn with in your Bibles to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24. Let's listen to the Word of God. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. This is so important. I, I just must give this to you before we close. Matthew 24, verse 3. Now, as he, Jesus, said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Lord, would you just tell us when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And, and they were questioning this. They, they wanted to know. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. Don't be upset by that. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famine, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Earthquakes in various places. Have you heard of that recently? Sure have. All these are the beginning of sorrows. That is the birth pains prior to the birth. A mother, before she delivers a baby, goes into birth pains. Can I hear an amen from these moms? <laughs> amen. Some of, you, some of us men ought to have to do that. I know of a fellow. <laughs> I, I know of a fellow that, that told his wife he didn't want her to have anything uh, to help her through childbirth. He wanted her to have it naturally. And I wanted to tell her, why don't you tell him to have it? <laughs> Jesus said, listen, these are the birth pains prior to the delivery. They will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many shall be offended and betray one another and will hate one another. Our world is filled with hate today. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Boy, hadn't we had them. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. There are many on our church roll here at Rocky Hill Baptist Church whose love has grown cold. They're not here anymore. And they're not in the cemetery either. <laughs> Jesus said that's going to be one of the characteristics. But he endures to the end shall be saved. Now listen to this. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations and then the end will come. 
Now listen carefully. We are closer to the gospel being preached to all the ends of the earth, to every nation than we have ever been. We are almost there. And Jesus said, when that happens, the end will come. I don't know the exact date. The Bible says not even the angels in heaven know. Only God knows. But I know something, that God has given us enough knowledge today in the Word of God to help us to know that it is around the corner. It is around the corner. Church, go and do what he told you to do. The promise of his return should affect how we behave in our world and toward our world. Jesus said, by this shall many men know that you are my disciples, that you love one another. And so the coming of Jesus is close at hand. This same Jesus is coming back. He's coming. Are you ready? Is your house in order? He's coming, this same Jesus. My prayer is today, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. I'm getting like George Jones, the bass singer of the cathedrals, who's gone on to be with the Lord. Before he died, he said this in one of his last gatherings. I have more years behind me than I have in front of me. But praise God, my bags are packed, and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Are you ready? Is your house in order? Is your house in order? It's coming. He said it was. The angel said, listen, this same Jesus that you see going right now, you see him physically, bodily, visually, he's coming in the same way. He's coming in the same way. And the Bible says, every eye shall behold him. Every eye shall behold him. He's coming. He's coming. These are, these are exciting days for us. I'm so glad I'm alive in this generation. Aren't you? Oh, come on. If you weren't, you'd be dead. Aren't you glad you're alive in this generation? With all the mess? Listen. The Bible says God's going to take you out of this mess one of these days. He's going to redeem you. As he redeemed your soul, he will redeem your body. And praise God, you know how we're going to know Jesus? We're going to have a body just like Jesus. Now, explain something to me. If, if I'm going to go up like Jesus, how am I going to go up? It won't be by airplane. It'll be the same way Jesus went up in the power of God. <laughs> Amen. Oh, if some people could see that, that'd really upset them, wouldn't it? <laughs> Listen, you're going to go up by the power and the grace of God at the rapture of the church. And the Bible says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we who will remain and, uh, and are alive will not precede those who have gone before us. You know what's going to happen before we're raptured out of this world? We're going to be at a point of being ready. But we're not going to go until we see our loved ones' bodies go out of those graves and go up to meet their souls and be with God and wait for us to join them. And the Bible says, then we which are alive and remain shall be changed in a moment and twinkling of an eye. Just bat your eye on ice for just one moment. That's how fast you'll go. That's pretty fast. I, I, I suggest to you this morning, that's faster than the speed of sound. Faster than light travels. We will go out of this world. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed and so shall we caught, be caught up in the air. What a glorious day that's going to be. Can you say amen this morning? Amen. amen. Stand with me to your feet, please. The pianist is going to come and play softly. The invitation is simply this. It's in the form of a question. Are you ready? Are you ready? You see, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going. I may go by death. I may go through the rapture. At this point, I don't know. But I know one thing. I'm going. I'm going. And I'm not bragging on myself. I'm bragging on Jesus. I'm going not through my marriage, but through his marriage alone. 
I'm going because the messenger said that you see this same Jesus.